Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Rana McBerto. Will is your host. Thank you so kind for being a part of the show. We're going to have a great show for you today. As usual, Bridge MCP, welcome aboard to Politics and Right. Bionic Chronic, welcome aboard. Uh, let's see. Uh, we also have maybe to lower gas prices. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. Eric Hayes, welcome aboard. Why is America begging OPEC for oil? America is not begging OPEC for oil, but we'll talk about that as well. Yvette Avery Herod, our union heroine, welcome aboard to the show. Uh, para ver, tenemos también a Bruce Pollard, welcome to the show. Alicia, welcome to the show. Alicia, I think it is. If I get it wrong, remember, I usually have a flair with the different things. I can hear you, my brother. You can hear me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Don't forget, special ones of you, you've got my... My direct connection here, when I screw up to say, Egberto, mira lo que estás haciendo, estás screwing up. Lee Grant, welcome to Politics Done Right. So I've got my, I have my full posse, my conservative posse, my progressive posse, my moderate posse. Everybody's here today. How you guys doing today, guys? Great to see everybody. I don't know the K the new KPFT manager. I just got the I knew who he was gonna be. I just got the official uh, thing from Pacifica just a few uh, hours ago that says this is your new manager at the KPFT 90.1 FM Houston. And you know, guys, we're in Fun Drive as well. But anyhow, let's get busy. What is the show gonna be about today? What is the show gonna be about today? Today it's Watch Republicans make a fool of themselves on Defund the Police on the Senate floor. Jessica Taylor, welcome aboard. And COVID is not the danger. We have to get away from thinking COVID is the danger. Gasoline is very dangerous if used in the wrong manner, right? Uh, yeast, penicillin. Is dangerous. That bacteria is dangerous if used in the wrong manner, right? Poisons. All these things, if we put them in the wrong places or if we put them in an environment that's bad, it's bad, right? It'll kill you. And COVID will kill you. COVID can spread. There are a lot of things that can spread that we don't allow to spread to kill us. Again, let's remember, COVID is bad, COVID is a killer, but COVID is not what's killing us. And there's an article that I'm going to quote, kind of read a little bit if we get the time from after talking to all of you. Uh, welcome aboard. Hi, Coop333. Three, three, three. You made it in on time to the real-time show and not the backup show, not the replay of the show. Welcome aboard. Hi, Coop333. Three, three, three. As well, E2247. And I think I saluted Jessica Taylor again. If I forgot... To mention you, go ahead and send me another message again. Okay, let's get busy. Uh, El Señor Rodnin asked me to read a long one, and, and he said he'd... Uh, and look, I'm reading it on faith. Okay, because I don't know what Rodnin has... I just kind of read a part about it, and it started to look like it's anti-Obama. So let's see what it says here. Let's see how much I agree with. So I'll start. What's killing us, Egberto? Do tell. Brother Lee Grant, that's what the show is about. Hang tight. Let's all stay. And by the way, throw your questions, all that good stuff in there. And we got a couple of videos to show. Okay, Michael Rodney said, Adegberto, I'd ask you to read this whole comment out. I will. Hi, Rose Williams. It's going to be my only post today and probably a controversial one. Barack Obama has been one of the worst ex-presidents ever. And let me just stop right there and tell you who I believe has been the best ex-president ever, in my lifetime at least, that I can speak of. And that is President Jimmy Carter. I've not seen such a magnanimous person, not only here in the United States with his uh, building homes, with the, I forgot the name of the project that, that he works with here, Building Homes in America, and going and being a observant at elections throughout the world, he has immersed himself, Jimmy Carter, in doing good things. And you can't help but believe the reason he's such a long liver. 
someone that has lived so long is that he has done so much. So Carter, as far as I'm concerned, is the most magnanimous president, ex-president, we've had in this country. Now I'll continue with the excoriation of Obama. These are not my words. I'm, this is the first time I'm going to read it, and I may have some commentary. What good has Obama done since out of office? If this article is missing anything, let me know. This is Michael Rudnan talking. As right now, my opinion of the man is down in the dumpster for the article. Former President Obama has distinguished himself, himself as an enemy of labor and friend of racist cops. NBA players began to go on strike last August of, after Jacob Blake, a black man, was shot by police seven times in front of his kids in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Amid a national uprising over the shooting of many other acts of racist police brutality, Obama called LeBron James and players union leaders Chris Paul and urged them to get back on the court and finish the playoffs, which they did. Obama was also instrumental in shutting down Bernie Sanders in, in shutting down Bernie Sanders' bid for the presidency, a huge setback to the movement for social democracy in the United States. When Sanders was leading in the primaries, Obama worked to organize the other rival candidates to drop out and back Biden, making it impossible for Sanders to win. He then persuaded the Democratic Socialist senator to drop out of the race. And let's not forget Obama's awful museum in Chicago. Uh, the thing in Chicago is that it's in a park, and many people believe that, that the park, uh, you know, he's just taken over a park that should really be left green, ta da ta ta da ta But there's a, there's a second story to that park. It unites two different demographics, and supposedly that's the reason he wanted there to unite the two sides of the park. I don't know, but that's, that's a theory there. The three memoir author is erecting a garish monument to himself on Jackson Park, with community activists argue, argue will wreak havoc on cherished green space and a fragile ecosystem, as well as upon the legal scaffolding for the very idea of public interest. End snippet from the article. You can add talking, taking speech, speaking fees from Wall Street to the tune of $400,000 per outing to the list of grievances, Call it a kickback for not prosecuting any too-big-to-jail banksters following the 2008 financial sector meltdown that nearly bankrupted our nation while the working class and middle class lost 40% of their wealth. P.S. The typical neoliberal pattern is to diversify the oppressor class and grease the wealthy palms. To elevate abject poverty into poverty by promoting jobs that are well below living wages as both wealth inequalities well spread poverty grow. Now, let's see how many you-know-what lives compare Obama to Bush or Trump as if that makes Obama better or them any better than reactionary conservatives for making the same comparison. Yes, I've seen the comparisons when I've shared this to groups recently, feeling a little pissed off today. Well, let me explain a few things about Obama. Obama, I gave not only myself, but a lot of us progressives gave Obama a pass in a lot of, for a lot of reasons. Obama was the first black president. We knew all the arrows were going to go through Obama. So we wanted Obama to have a successful uh, reign so that, uh, so that that administration would not collapse and then racist, um, the racist portion of America able to use that and say, you see, these people can't govern. Okay? That is... That, that is why we took it easy on Obama. Now, it is true that Obama was a uh, community organizer. It is true that Obama going into the system had a wonderful heart and a whole lot of intent. It is true that Obama has a lot in the manner uh, in which to talk to people. That is all true. What has happened to Obama is what happened to every single president that I've seen except Carter. And, I, and this is going to make everybody go crazy. Also, Bush 2 and Bush 1. And what I mean by that is, well, Bush, the Bushes grew up into plenty. 
So there's not much that they needed. So the $400,000 speeches and all of that meant nothing to them. But the reality is they didn't go across. They, they weren't as visible as, let's say, how Hillary Clinton, President Obama, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Bill Clinton, and all the rest have really profited from the plutocracy. In that, I agree with. Where I, where I get concerned is that one would want to judge Obama by a different standard than one would judge Bill Clinton and others. Okay? So let's, let's be clear here. I cannot argue with anything that that article says so far. I cannot. I cannot. But is it any different or have you been less enamored by any of the other, let's say, Democratic presidents because they've all done that? So here is what I say about Obama. Obama underutilized his prowess. I understand his timidity while in office because, again, the truth of the matter is the presidency has its own gravity. There's just so much you can do as a president with that gravity. But, but, I am in complete agreement that after the presidency, there's much more as an activist that could have been done. But what happens too often is you get involved with the plutocracy and you get the taste of the high living and you get the taste of that special dignity. And that is what you like. You're, you still have your core values. You still want to help the poor. You still want to help all these people. But your instinct is, but I also like. I like the adulation. I like there, there's something about living above. And that is what... I think we have to understand. He is a disappointment in retirement because he's not back out on the streets. I think a much more effective Obama would be a Carter model, not Carter solving poor things on housing, would be Obama in the streets with Black Lives Matter, Obama in the streets with all these other organizations, the poor, the poor persons, the poor, uh, the the uh, poor campaign with uh, Bishop, uh, you know who I'm talking about that I need to interview. So, I think I am in half agreement, half agreement with the article, but it's not about him being a neoliberal in the presidency. Because while I wanted to fight Obama in the presidency, I understood the, 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 the jail that the presidency is to some extent. But once you leave the presidency and you are completely secure, you should be on the streets. And you should be out there talking real issues. Because you have, you have proven to be a successful president and then you could have gone out there and executed. Reverend Barber, thank you, Alicia. So that is what, I, that, those are my thoughts. So, I mean, I am not going to judge Obama outside of any other president. He was a darn good president. As far as being a worse ex-president, nowhere close to being the worst ex-president. As far as being a disappointing ex-president, I will take that. Not worst ex-president, not Bad president. He was a damn good president uh, in the times that he reigned. But again, there's a lot more that could have been done as an ex-president. I fight with a lot of people as far as why we didn't push hard on Obama. I still go back and forth with that. I still fight with myself on that one. Should we have really uh, hold out harder for Medicare for All? Should we, when we knew Medicare for All was going to fail, should we have held out for the public option? There are a lot of questions that are asked, that I ask. Okay? But there's a lot that is disappointing, and there's a lot that he could do going for further. But again, 
if you want the template of an, of, of an effective ex-president, Brother Jimmy Carter has always been my hero. Brother Jimmy Carter shows what morality is all about. J Brother Jimmy Carter shows what really caring about others mean, not only in rhetoric, but in your body. And all of us that are doing this kind of work, by the way, that go out there in the field or that give up quite a few things to do this, that's what it's all about. And uh, you want to? I'll tell you. I'll tell you something. And I've I've said this about Oprah and all these other folks, right? If you want to really impress me, let's say somebody with a billion, Oprah Winfrey wants to impress me. Put that money into real progressive issues that make a difference in society, in changing the corporatocracy. Brother Obama wants to, to, to impress me. Take the millions that you have now and invest it into all these little, little organizations that are trying to build up folk, to fight voter fraud, I mean voter, uh, voter suppression, etc. But they're not doing that, right? They are still thinking we are the masters and we are going to uh, do things the way we can. No. If you really want to execute, you go to every single community, find the barber shop, the private media, all these things and start throwing the, that excess money you've made using the corporatocracy into those domains and start seeing grassroots action take hold like it did in, I think it was Iceland. So, um, Rudnin... Your statement was, I, uh, I'd ask you to read the whole thing. It's going to be my own post that you said, but uh, you don't know how it's going to take it. You know how. I think I try to be honest, fair, and not pull anything over anybody's eyes, face, or whatever. So you know where, I, where I'm coming from. All right, let's see. And let me, oh, wow, a lot of messages came in then. Let me really go down. Uh, okay, and Michael says, thank you for reading the whole comment. Uh, Obama said vague stuff everyone thought applied to their position. That's a good that's a good politician though. You know, you can't blame him for doing that. That's how you win. And first of all, that is that's the only way a black man could win in this country back in 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 2008. This country still is not ready to 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 really elect Obama was special. You've got to agree with that. Obama was simply special. All right, let's see. Uh, Bruce says wouldn't have been my choice for vice president. Uh, Reagan, uh, Reagan ruined Carter. Reagan destroyed Carter. But you know what? And it turns out that Carter did so much more. Leftists used to adore Obama. Now he gets thrown under the bus. No, he's not thrown under the bus. Uh, a few people are willing to speak honestly. I mean, I love Obama, and I think Obama opened a lot of doors. I don't only think Obama opened a lot of doors. I think the fact that Obama was president, you have a lot of people of color, black, uh, black, poor, whites. All these people look at Obama and said, if Obama can do it, this guy from Hawaii, who at one time was poor, living in Indonesia with barefoot walking around, if he can be president of the United States, I can too. Obama was a, Obama is somebody that a whole lot of people can look up to. And I, to this day, still look up to Obama. You don't have to, you don't have, you, you don't adore, you don't praise, you don't worship but you look at how successful they were at doing what they did. And Obama was... The fact that Obama made it into that White House makes him special. Makes him successful. I remembered when I supported him in the campaign after being a supporter of Hillary Clinton at first and then changing in the middle of the campaign. That was special. And I'm not going to take any of that away. Now, people change. Just like Hillary Clinton changed. Hillary Clinton used to be out here in South Texas working with the Latinos to make sure that she, she was a down ground uh, in as much as her parents were Republicans. She came down here and she worked in Texas. She was a grassroots woman. She became a bankster, defending bankers. You know, people change. People change. All right, Bridge MCP says, because he was black, it's okay. It, uh, it's okay to say it, Jessica. Yeah, it's okay. This is politics done right. We say things the way they really, really are here. We always say the things they really, really are. Uh, my, and, and folks also know, we don't judge. We just correct if somebody makes a mistake, including myself. 
We want people to say what's on their minds because we want the only way you can flush out statements and things is if people feel free to talk. And if they say something stupid, silly, or ridiculous, like I've said before, we can say, hey, Berto, you know that it's kind of stupid and silly now. Oh, I've learned. I'll try not to do it again. I'll try to get rid of that memory. How about being exhausted from two years running the country? No, it's not exhaustion, though, Nanette Bird Smith. It's a bit more than that. And Bridge MTP says, I still love Obama. I, st I still love Obama, too. I still love Obama. I definitely do. I think he opened a lot of doors. Alicia, poor people's campaign, Reverend Barber. Yes, thank you. Obama has said, but true, he could accomplish so much now, but it seems he sold out to the Democratic elite. That is the answer right there. He sold out to the Democratic elite. Maybe we can get him back. Obama kept saying, I'll get my shoes and join in the streets. I haven't seen him walk his talk. Isn't that what I said earlier uh, when I talk about that? Exactly. That's the thing. I tell you, if I were president of the United States, and I, I can't be, I was born in Panama. But if I were president of the United States and I got out of there, I would be on the streets because I would have a following. I would have a following, a huge following, oh, national. And the one thing I could bring attention to is because I'm out there on the streets with the following that I have, I would be able to get the media attention that Barber doesn't get, you know? Uh... I've tried to get a couple of interviews with Barber when he was here in Austin. He had a lot of big media attention, so little politics done right couldn't get, a, get attention. I'll pretty get one when, when it dies down, uh, he'll come on. I'm pretty darn sure about that. Okay, uh, let's see. He certainly isn't the worst, but I agree, very disappointing. Obama could have campaigned even once for Nina Turner in OI. But Nina Turner isn't his candidate. Again, his candidate would have been the other woman. Bruce, mass incarceration, immigration, both Obama laws is true. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Bridge MCP said, Iceland president is a woman. Didn't I say we want women presidents? We want women leaders now? That is what we need in the, in the world. That is what we need now. Rose Williams says, uh, Tyler Perry is another guy I'm really disappointed in. He bought an entire neighborhood in Georgia and not for friendly housing. It's amazing because I have a, a, uh, a friend that I work with. She's a reporter in, um, in Georgia, in Atlanta. And we did a, a couple of pieces on Tyler Perry. She actually sneaked onto his uh, compound and did some tape. They put a confounded fence in between the community and the studio. So you have a community at the backside that is in distress, and then you have the studio. The deal was he got on that base. They gave him a base at a reduced cost. Right? And the idea was that old neighborhood would have been gotten better. But that didn't happen. Instead, the prices of the homes near the studio skyrocketed. And the people, a lot of the people got to move out. A lot of it is in disrepair. The real estate guys pick it up and sell it for a fortune. It's a shame. And that is what... you Remember what I said. Remember what I tell you people all of the times. Racism, people like to talk about racism. And I talk about racism, and people, some of the some of my right wingers, like, oh, you talk about race, and, but you don't. I wish you would you would start looking at the context in which I talk about race, because I don't believe in race. It is stupid to believe in race. Race doesn't exist. What I talk about is the necessity of race in this country's economic system, and it's not about race. Do you think? Who do you think Oprah would side more with? Any uh, uh, these black folk in Atlanta, or be, or or, or uh, brother Trump? Have you? I, I'm, I, and I prove it this way. I'm a, I'm going to ask you guys a few things. Beyonce, I'm going to call some black mill super hundred millionaire billionaires. Beyonce, Oprah Winfrey, uh, Kanye, all these multi billionaires that have made money uh, off of your backs, of course. How many of them have really gone out of their way to say anything negative of all the evil that Donald Trump has done? Nothing. And you know why? They know Donald Trump personally. They know all of this is a part of our economic system. They know it. And when you see some of them do good, it's not doing good specific. Oh, we go like this guy, a black university. Uh, I think uh, he paid off the debt of 400 med students. A black guy in real estate, in, in, in a, in a real estate guy. He gives away 
millions to the university to pay off all those people's medical bills. And everybody, is, a lot of the leaders in the black community, they are so happy. Oh, look at what he's doing. He's giving back to the community. And I am the pooper now, right? I'm the pooper. I'm like, he's not giving back a damn thing to the community. He's buying free advertising. This is a guy who makes 15% on investment on the people who invest with him. And not only that, invest in things like uh, uh, gentrification that throws a lot of low-income people out of their homes and bring it up for rich people to live in, etc., etc., etc. So I give, a, I give 40, 50 million dollars away and I turn that into a couple hundred million dollars elsewhere. I get good fortune because I get a tax break. I get all these things. We have to understand that the people that are in it together are we the people. We the people from Appalachia. We the people from the ghettos. We the people from the barrios. We the people that are middle class trying to make a living. We are alone. They need to separate us so that we fight among each other so that they can continue to pill for us. You just think about it. So when it, whenever I talk about race, it never has to do with things like, oh, racial profiling or you're a racist guy. No, 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 no. All of this is built into our system. And it's so hard. I, was, I did a book club yesterday. Uh, there's a group that went ahead and they, they bought... This book, How to Make America Utopia. And I got a lot of questions, right? And when I explained our economic system, some people didn't really want to hang with me, right? So I had a good woman. She said, she said, are you really against investments that bad? And it's not that I'm against investment in a particular manner, but the way we've done investments, uh, you know, it's, it's really slavery. And a lot of them didn't buy it, right? They didn't really buy it. So, uh I, you know, one of the guys said, are you just saying tax the rich? And I said, no, don't call it tax the rich. I say, take back what was stolen. But it was a bit deeper because she made a very good point. She said, but you know, we have been, you know, investment is not all that bad. We have been investors for a long time. And then she brought up people who invest in the Dutch companies who uh, went around the world, people who invest in the American companies. And, you know, I, I continued to listen because I knew exactly what she was saying. And she at first didn't realize what she was saying because we are so indoctrinated into what we've learned in school. So at the end of the discussion, I said, you've talked about the investment in Dutch companies. You've talked about the investment in British companies. You've talked about the investment in fresh com French companies. All these are the colonizers that came to America, that went to South America, that went to India, that went to all these places. And I said... So you've just proven my point. These were investors who abstracted, abstracted, I'm going to explain what I mean, who abstracted terrorism, genocide, and slavery. Think about this. These people invested in a company because they knew that company was going to the new worlds to get riches. These riches, to get these riches meant enslaving indigenous people, enslaving African people, a genocidal effect on, on the indigenous people who owned, or not who owned the land, who, who were renters of the land, because these people don't believe in land ownership, who were in the land and they made their, so, but you didn't have to see that. You're a good person, you're a good investor in England, in France, in Portugal, in Spain, you're a good person. You just invested to make some riches that's coming from the new world. So what? that is what you call abstracted slavery, abstracted harm. You're harming a lot of people. You're killing a lot of people, but you're not doing it. We hide that from you. When you invest in Exxon and Exxon goes to Nigeria and you go to Lagos, Nigeria and you look at all the pollution in the Bay of, Bay of Nigeria, Lagos and all these places and you see all the people that are in Peru that are dying because Exxon or, or Chevron or whatever one of them just let the oil flow in the dirt that they don't use and kill a lot of You don't see that. You're just an investor in Exxon. You're at your pool, living off of making your money work for you. And those are the things that people don't, that, when, that we are abstracted from and we, are not, we don't necessarily take note of. 
And when you start looking at things for the way they really are, we get a new view of humanity and what we are capable of. Let me continue reading now. Uh, Jessica, I'm not going to read replies from one person to another. I'm just going to read the ones that people put out there. Nanette Birdsmith, I personally believe Obama is a great role model. I didn't say he's not a great role model. Nanette, I think he's a good role model. But remember what we're talking about post, in my case, post-presidency. Uh, Bree says, Michael, uh, that's for Michael Rudnett. Uh, let's see, let's see, uh, see, I'm, and Tyler Perry is supposedly a devout Christian. Some of the people that do the most harm in America are Christians. Uh, this mass anti-mask movement is mostly, a, or is largely a Christian movement. And I played some videos for you guys a few, a uh, couple of weeks ago. I believe in race, the only race, human race. I love you, I love you, Bridge. That's exactly right. Nanette Birdsman, sure, is a lot of judgment going on here today. All right, let's see. Nanette, yes. Uh, Mike sees that the political left continues to pilfer the whole society. Really? You spend all your money. Uh, I don't know what that means. Anyhow, continuing, continuing, continuing. Dixie Fire is at night. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, I know, I know, I know. Investing in colonization. Alicia, you get it. Investing in colonization. Biden's COVID relief bill is chock full of anti-white reverse racism. Rag Raffer, New York Post, Americans are enthusiastic about spending money on physical infrastructure, Bridges Roads, Broadband, but the racist bill has hands out jobs and contracts and locates projects based on race, not merit. Who said that now? That is funny. You, you, you know, when, when I hear stories like that, let me tell you what I think. Let's go under the assumption that there are many projects that, the, that written in the law, it says we need to find... Uh, uh, we need to find companies owned by people of color to do that, right? And everybody, and, and folks are going to complain, right? It, it's amazing because a lot of times you find, and I found this in my other companies, I never ever had to say, because of the type of company I had, what race I was. But as you're going to see in my other book about all the tribulations I went through as a black man in business, owned my own business, that developed my own product, that wrote my own product, that developed the books for my own product, nobody at, for a long time knew what the face looked like. And when the face, it's amazing how things change when that company took on a face. But that's, that's for my next book. But I want to tell the reason I said is this. Nobody has to say uh, what kind of company to hire. But it's always amazing to me what the companies that are hired look like. And nobody says, how comes there aren't other companies out there that you could have chosen? But when you go and intentionally say, I want to find a way to get everybody included, somehow it is racist and unmeritorious. It always behooves me. Behooves me. Jessica Taylor, we are so proud, so programmed to norms that are detrimental to us. Exactly, Jessica. Mike sees like I'm enslaved to the political left who is currently in power. No, you're not. You know? California wildfire. Okay, let's see what else we got. Jessica Taylor. Bridge MCP. Rudnin to show that they are... Okay, continue. That's not... That's some, to somebody else. All right, let's see what... Egberto Willis missed this. Not sure this can be played here. As there is cursing in the video. I can't play the cursing, but this is how I feel. If, if an adult gets sick with COVID after foregoing vaccination, other than due to an immune uh, issue or related medical issue, they should go to the end of the line, not the front, if hospitals run out of room. I, you know, I, would, I, I would think that should be the case. That, I think, is the fairest thing to do, right? My white right-wing friend can hear the show from the other room. Good. I'm glad. Tell him to join us. Uh, Eric Hayes, B BS, you may eat those anti-church words. No, I won't. I won't. I've played enough videos and I've gone to enough churches and I've listened to enough of them on TV to hear how they talk about the government taking over with masks and vaccines. No, it's not. There's a large percentage of the right-wing church that are simply the problem. That's a fact. Go to the internet and watch their... And I'm not talking about go to the internet to see misinformation. I'm saying go to the church's websites. Right now, go to the church's websites. 
Listen, listen to our Second Baptist Church in Houston. Listen to our Second Baptist Church in Houston. I played a piece of it a few weeks ago. Please, Eric Hayes, I only speak truth. Second guess me, but please look it up. I never lie specifically. All right, was Oxycontin a valid abstraction case? Slavery is not an abstraction case either. Slavery was against the law in countries where the investors were. Yeah, what I'm talk when I talk about slavery as an abstraction, it's important that you understand what I mean. Uh, when I talk about slavery as an abstraction, uh, I'm talking about the following. I want, I want riches. But for me to get riches, I would have to kill. Since I don't want to kill, there is somebody willing to kill for me. All I have to do is invest in their company that does the killing. That's an abstraction. That's a layer of abstraction. That is like how I write software. I write software to one interface. Like when I talked to you guys about the space station, it was called the Tiffin module. It was to allow Apollo computers... Uh, the, all computers now, Apollo, the Mac, and the PC to all use TCP IP the same way. In other words, one base code was working the whole thing. The idea was allow the people who are programming to program to one interface. It didn't matter if they were writing C for a PC, for, a, a, for a Apollo, or for a, a, for a Macintosh. It all worked the same at the TIFM level. So that's what's called an abstract. That's what I meant by an abstraction, uh, sir. All right, uh, not, but uh, I agree with what you're saying. Where it's illegal, I agree. But it, the abstraction wasn't about, I wasn't talking about it legal. I'm talking about personal for a pers particular person. All right, let's see. Uh, Bridge MCP, attention listeners, please support this. Oh, it's that time, isn't it? Please support the show. Uh, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys. Guys, if you are on YouTube, Please click that. Thank you for reminding me, Bridge MCP. That's why Bridge MCP is a le leader of the PDR. All right, folks, please go ahead and uh, click that join button if you are on YouTube. Please become a part of our PDR posse. Uh, likewise, you can go ahead and support us by going to politicsandright.com slash support. Politicsandright.com slash support. You can get our books. There's Bridge MCP with the cup on the screen. And there is... Uh, there is uh, Oh, gosh, I missed that. All right, let me go ahead and uh, put the books on the screen now. Uh, you can go ahead and get our books at politicsandright.com slash books. Politicsandright.com slash books. Likewise, you can go ahead and get our uh, all our stuff at politicsandright.com slash stores. Please consider getting that. And the cup that you saw Bridge MCP drinking out of is at this link in on the screen. Thank you so kindly for being with us. Again, please consider becoming a part of the PDR Posse. I have some videos to show you. The total amount is only 10 minutes, so I can talk for a little, about three more minutes, and then I'll play the videos for you guys. Anyhow, let's, let me go back to where I was before in the list, uh, where I was kindly reminded to tell you guys to please support the show. Uh, let's see, let's see, coming down, coming down. Ah, uh, coming down, coming down, coming down, coming down. Egberto, you missed this. No, that's I, I saw that one already. Okay, let's see. Tom C says, New Commonwealth Fund reports finds U.S. healthcare system ranks among the 11 wealthiest countries when it comes, last, last, among the 11 wealthy countries when it comes to careful care affordability, administration, inefficiency, equity, and healthcare outcomes. And, but we are exceptional. We claim that we're exceptional, but that is true. And I saw that, I saw that, and I saw that. Tax the damn church, according to Bridge MCP. I agree. Eric Hayes, you might be careful on your thoughts as you can't blanket statements as you're detrimental to Christian people with that puke. My wife is a Christian, my wife is a deacon, and my wife would agree with what I just said. Because there are a lot of these right-wing churches that are doing harm to their pew many times over. Key findings, the top performing countries overall are Norway, the Netherlands, and Australia. The United States ranks last overall. This is from AVQ, despite spending far more than its GDP on health care. AVQ also says, number two, the U.S. ranks last on access to care, ad ad administrative efficiency, equity, and health care outcomes. And uh, I don't see three of three. Jessica Taylor says, San Francisco to require vaccine passport. That is smart and very good. 
A uh, new video by Senator Whitehouse, the strong message to insurance industry. It's time to wake up and show up. Stop underwriting fossil fuels expansion and phase out insurance. Exactly. Uh, let's keep going down. Trans Mountain, Pipeline, Edmonton at Vancouver must get insurance. Yeah, I know, and they can't get it thus far. Uh, uh, Bruce says, my point was that abstraction does not relieve the wealthy from guilt. I agree. 100%. Rose Williams says, but that's why they incorporate. All right, let's go to the first video. Must see TV. Check this out. This one you've got to see. Democrats really let these Republicans have it this time. Cory Booker and Dick Durbin taught Tommy Torville and Josh Holly a lesson, folks. You got to listen to this one because... Everybody tries to make an issue out of defund the police, defund the police, not understanding what it really means. But guess what? What we did was turn the turn, what they did was turn the tables on demagoguing Republicans. Check this out, and then we'll take it on the other side. I call on my colleagues to support our law enforcement by voting yes for this amendment. Opposing my amendment is a vote in support of defunding the police and against the men and women in blue. The gentleman's time has expired. Madam President. Senator I, from New Jersey. I am so excited. This is perhaps the highlight of this long and painful and torturous night. This is a gift. If it wasn't complete abdication of Senate procedures and, and, and esteem, I would walk over there and hug my colleague from Alabama. And I will tell you right now, thank God, because there's some people who have said that they're members of this deliberative body that want to defund the police, to my horror. And now this senator has given us the gift that finally, once and for all, we can put to bed this scurrilous accusation that somebody in this great esteemed body would want to defund the police. So let all of us, a hundred people, not walk, but sashay down there and vote for this amendment and put to rest the lies, and I am sure I will see no political ads attacking anybody here over to fund the police. And I would ask unanimous consent to add something else to this obvious bill. Can we add also that every senator here wants to defund the police, believes in God, country, and apple pie? Friends across the aisle said they don't want to defund the police. That's outstanding. Let's go a step farther. Let's fund them. Let's put 100,000 new cops on the streets right now to protect our families, to protect our children. I urge a yes vote on this amendment, and I ask for the yeas and nays. This has been a historic day in the United States Senate. We started by passing a, bi a bipartisan infrastructure bill that made history. And now the senator from Missouri is finally coming around to supporting the cops hiring program that was created by Senator Joe Biden in 1994. We sent a letter to the Appropriations Committee signed by 37 Democrats for the COPS program. Do you know how many Republicans signed the letter? None. But with your amendment tonight, clearly you've come around. The Republicans are joining the Democrats and supporting Joe Biden's COPS program. You are right. You know, it is amazing that these guys never do their homework. But what's more amazing is for how long we have allowed them to get away with it. They have never had the upper hand, but we have just acquiesced to them. We have a tendency to believe, well, people will know that they are just demagoguing. Well, you know what? People don't know. We have to assert it. And what we saw uh, Curry Booker do, what we saw Dick Durbin do, that is what we have to do over and over again. Let America see how things really are. Great job, guys. Great job, Cory Booker. Great job, Senator Dick Durbin. Absolutely great job. Was that funny or what? Let's see. Jessica Taylor says, my concern is those thousands of new officers are for POC neighborhoods. Well, I mean, I, it, it's a joke. Those are non-binding amendments. And that's why it was so easy for Cory Booker to do what he did. Because the guy from Alabama didn't have a clue that what he was saying, every Democrat is going to vote for that because the amendment is non-binding. It's non-binding. They can just throw the amendment out there, put it on, and every Democrat is going to be on record saying, hey, we don't support any removing any money uh, from, from the cops. However, it, when we had the rescue package, we have... Every single Republican on record 
defunding the police. <laughs> it's so, I mean, it is so ironic that they are playing games that won't occur while the progressives and Democrats are playing games, are not playing games, are doing what's actually effective. When Republicans voted against the rescue plan, the rescue bill, they voted to defund the police. Okay? That's what they voted to do. Defund the police. Democrats, progressives, when they signed the rescue bill, they voted to fund the police. It's amazing. Now, what did they, what did they do? They come out there and they say, okay, let's go ahead and write a bill that says we are not going to defund the police. Oh, sure. Cory Booker says, absolutely. Because that, that bill is such a poorly written bill. Who cares? Yeah, I'm going to hug you, brother. You just gave us a commercial. You just gave it to us. Because if you go out there and write a commercial that says, hey, uh, let's see, Bridge wants something on the screen. Let's see what that is. Uh, para ver, para ver. Okay, let's see. All right, I can put that on the screen, Bridge. There we go. Uh, there it is on the screen for Bridge MCP. My pillow guy, Mike Lindell, August 13 is the date that Donald Trump will be reinstated. Do you know what else is on 13 National Kool-Aid Day? For real, it's the second Friday in August. <laughs> that is so funny. Jessica Tigler, okay, thanks for the clarification. You need to tell Benjamin Dixon this too. He has me upset this morning after uh, this amendment. Yeah, it's a, it's a non-binding amendment. Uh, none of that. Remember... This stuff is all placed on, I think it was the, if I remember correctly, the bill that they're working on, the, 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 um, como se llama? It's on the, uh, 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 reconciliation bill. So don't, don't, don't sweat it. Let me go ahead and play the other thing so that I don't run out of time and then we'll go for the other one. Mehdi Hassan hits the nail on the head. It is time to lean in. It is time to lean in. You know the crazies that we see on TV telling people who are trying to save the children of America going to school that we know who you are. We know where you live. We're going to get you. What are you going to get me for? Why do you want to hurt me? We are going to get you. Why are you going to hurt me? Because I want to save your kids. Because I want your kids to live. Because I want your kids not to get infected. The psychopathic behavior that many have instilled into otherwise good people is completely, completely, un, un, it's not understandable. I want you to see this and then we'll take it on the other side. One of the most frustrating aspects of this pandemic has been the way in which basic public health measures like social distancing, masks, vaccines, have all been dragged by the GOP into America's ridiculous culture wars. I mean, just check out this video from it. One of the most frustrating aspects of this pandemic has been the way in which basic public health measures like social distancing, masks, vaccines, have all been dragged by the GOP into America's ridiculous culture wars. I mean, just check out this video from a school board meeting in Franklin, Tennessee last night showing anti-mask protesters screaming at medical professionals who had just spoken in favor of masks in schools. We know who you are. We know who you are. We know who you are. You can leave freely, but we will find you and we know who you are. You will never be allowed in public again. You will never be allowed. You will never be allowed in public again. Absolutely bonkers. But here's the thing. As with so many culture war issues, Liberals and Democrats are running away from these fights when they should be leaning into them and winning them. Those screaming anti-maskers are not the majority in this country. Just look at this new polling out today from Morning Consult and Politico. 56% of registered voters say they support requiring vaccines for all Americans except those with medical conditions. And we know the vast majority of American adults support getting vaccinated. They prove that with their own arms. 71.2% of them have now had at least one shot. This new polling shows broad support for mask mandates, too. 64% of registered voters say they support local governments requiring employees to wear masks in offices. 61% support requiring masks for indoor dining. 62% support requiring masks at gyms. And 65% support requiring masks at entertainment venues. So these mandates are clearly a winning issue for Democrats. A clear and big majority of the American people are on their side. 
Oh, and as for the other side, well, they are just drenched in hypocrisy. Take a listen to Texas Republican Senator Ted Cruz's latest anti-mask mandate, anti-vaccine rant on Fox News earlier this week. My views were very simple. There should be no mandates, zero concerning COVID. That means no mask mandates, regardless of your vaccination status. That means no, ma- no vaccine mandates. Th- that means no vaccine passports. And I've introduced legislation, a bill to ban vaccine passports. This week, I'm introducing a bill to ban vaccine mandates. And this will, I'm, uh, week, I'm introducing a bill to end mask mandates. Just one small point, Ted Cruz. Your children attend an elite private school in Houston, Texas, at a cost of more than $25,000 a year, whereas the blog Boing Boing reports masks are required, quote, the school views the use of face coverings as an important way that we as a community can slow the spread of the virus and protect one another. Due to the current situation in our community, all persons on campus will be required to have a face covering. So according to Ted Cruz, there should be no mask mandates except apparently at his own kid's very expensive school. No mandatory masks for your children in the classroom, but they're fine for mine. Oh, hypocrisy. Ted Cruz be thy name. And let's remember that we have some very strong moral leaders in Texas, in, in uh, Tennessee, in Florida, that are bucking their irresponsible governor and some even their irresponsible boards. Unfortunately, I don't live in an area where we have a responsible board that bucks the governor to say, I care more about humanity. I care more about children. I care more about the lives of these children. I care about not turning these children into a, 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 an AK-47 of COVID-19 into a building that will infect, that will likely get quite a few of these kids maimed for life or killed. And these guys are acting out. They're screaming at somebody trying to do good. They're screaming at somebody who's trying to protect their own kids. Grown men. Did that seem like grown men? What what can we think about the the children that these grown men are going to produce or have produced? What kind of character have with parents like this? Hopefully, others will rub off and do better. But folks, uh, we need those that are progressives, those are, that are progressives, those that are liberal, those that are conservative with a mind, conservative with intrinsic morality. You've got to go out there and lean in. This is a topic that for those who lean in, they're the ones that show they're humane. They're the ones that show they care about kids. They care about people. They care about humanity. Don't allow these guys to somehow get the upper hand for being inhumane, for being immoral, and for being simply wrong. Exactamundo, 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 exactamundo. Okay. Uh, let's see. I, I just want to clear up one thing because I saw, I, I saw, uh, brother, brother, um, what's his name? Come on, Smith. I'm losing my mind today. I'm not remembering my, my peeps, my conservative. Where are you? Lee Grant, Lee Grant, brother Lee Grant constantly want to sort of make things sort of a, a racial thing with me. In other words, he thinks, you know, like, Hey, how would you have responded to the black church? I mean, if you, were, if you followed my program not only here but on KPFT 90.1 FM, I go after any church, person, whatever that does wrong, including black churches. And for anybody who listened to a uh, couple of programs on KPFT and on Politics and Right here on the internet, you'd hear me talk about the black church. You'd hear me talk about it being just as uh, misogynistic and patriarchal like any other church and one of the reasons I even came to the conclusion that many a times sexism in my opinion and this is just my opinion is actually worse than racism is that it's interesting women have to take it from everybody just that that simple and I'm a guy who like math to me that says a lot Jessica Taylor the in-person class my child would have been 
and already have two cases and the whole class is quarantined. So glad I stayed online school. Jessica, you're a smart woman. Very smart. Lawrence Sims says, cops standing there and arresting none of the terrorists who threatened innocent people. You know something? Did you notice that? They were accosting the guy in the car. You didn't have a cop that came and pulled him back and said, hey, don't do that. Or, you know, it's amazing. And, you know, when I reported about a, an incident that one of my friends brought up here in Kingwood, where one woman said, I didn't want to argue with the cop because they took offense to it, not realizing the difference in treatments different folk get from cops. Astounding. Michael Stevenson, welcome aboard. I wouldn't go that far. I don't know what you're talking about. You may want to enlighten me a little bit, Her hermano, my brother. Uh, let's see who else we got here. Uh, anybody knew that I didn't? Brian Minor, Police Powers Act is the 10th Amendment. Uh, I don't think I saluted you before. Uh, E2247 was concerned about my sanity yesterday when I spent 15 minutes talking or 10 minutes talking with no audio. Thank you for your concern, brother. Appreciate it. I'm okay. I'm okay. And he then says, love you cuz. You know I love you and I love all you guys in this room. Every single one of you. Uh, the only race that really matters is 100% meter high hurdles. Or <laughs> Love it, brother. High Coop says, why didn't the guy in the car just run them over? It's the Republican way. No, that would be the wrong thing to do. We're moral. We're moral. We're moral. And most Republicans are too. Most Republicans are good people. Right, Eric? Right, Lee, Lee Grant? Right, uh, uh, Mike Cisak? We got a lot of Republicans in the house. I love them. These are my brothers and sisters. I, I don't see my sister Republican right now. But no, love you all. But anyhow, folks, I got to get out of here because I have a, I got two, I think two interviews that I have to do right here. One just sent me a text and said they're going to be 30 minutes late. But anyhow, I got to get out of here. Look, I want to thank you guys for always being there for Politics Done Right for me. I want to thank you guys for spending the time listening. I want to ask you guys to please remember to share, share, and share. I need you to share so that we can get more penetration. That is the only way we actually get it done. How will 100,000 police do in, say, Chicago or elsewhere? Look, it's a gimmick. That's not what we need. We don't need 100,000 police. We just need to have a budget that says $100,000 100, you know, for that, and then we can allocate it different ways. Okay, got to get out of here. Let's go ahead and say one more time. Please, folks, if you are on YouTube, click that Join button, become a member, please. Likewise, if you if you uh, other options, please go to politicsandright.com slash support, politicsandright.com slash support. I couldn't do it without you. My name is Egbert. Oh, I forgot to put the books in there. Uh, visit politicsandright.com slash books to get our books. And please remember to go ahead and go to politicsandright.com slash store to get our t-shirts, all that good stuff. If you're on YouTube, you can get our t-shirts and all of that right on the rack on YouTube as well. Good quality. See, I have one on right now. Uh, anyway, my name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics and Right. And you know how I end this baby. I am what? Out! We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.